Hey, welcome back to the worm, folks. I got a weird project for this fine day. Actually, it's not a fine day. That's why I'm thinking of doing this project. I really want to be working on my outdoor kitchen, but it, I go out there, get the tools out. It starts raining. I put them away, back and forth and back and forth. And there's something I've been wanting to try. When I'm hanging out in here, you know, editing videos or on the rare nights that I sleep in here. I mean, I will be sleeping in here all the time pretty soon when the weather gets a little worse once the snow starts to fly. And I gotta go out to like brush my teeth or take a leak or something. It's it's not a big deal to throw on a headlamp. There are headlamps all over here. I use headlamps every single day. But I think it'd be really cool to have like a light outside that door. And I know that might seem like the most mundane thing. But as most of you know, I don't have electricity. So it's not as straightforward as like wiring up a normal light. The only lights I have in here in the evening are this cool reflective oil lamp and then I have a couple of these Ryobi lights that take the same same batteries as all my power tools they work really great that's the lantern style one. Oh, now that I think of it I feel like maybe I have another one of these big ones somewhere maybe somehow I'll figure out where it might be maybe it's not maybe that's the only one I have but I have a couple of these these little bitty ones it's kind of a crazy idea for a very simple LED light because, you know, the lights aren't expensive. There's nothing to it. The battery used for the light is really expensive. I mean, not compared to other power tool brands, but it's still, you know, if you get a couple on sale, they're 50 bucks a piece. So that makes this whole project stupid. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. I haven't tried busting into one of these yet, but here's my thought take the lens off of here, take the light out of here, somehow make this mount on the wall so you can still put a battery in it, you can pull it out to charge it, and you still have the button on it to turn the light on. I mean, I was kind of hoping we could cut this thing off, but the lens and the switch are really close together. I don't know, let's go bust into it. I do have the distinct feeling that this is gonna take, uh, little projects like this take a lot of tools. But we can find some scrap lumber if we need to mount the LED uh, light inside there and the lens too. Somehow weatherproof it all. Somehow mount it outside. And then I'd rather not just have this thing sitting on the shelf with like wires running out of it. It'd be really cool if it was mounted. So we're definitely going to have to do some woodworking. And if we need to, if we need to, we can get out the 3D printer and uh, I don't know, design some parts or some connectors. That Ooh, it's 48 degrees out. Let's actually go do this in the tool room. I haven't started the propane stove in there this year. And now that it's all cleaned out, there's actually workbench space. Let's, yeah, let's go do that. Yeah. Mount it right there. It'll be the leak light. Would you look at this place? Look at all this workspace. This thing is going to stink, isn't it? Hundred square foot tool room is not bad at all. You can presumably do a lot in here other than sleep when it's really cold. There's our extra. Oh, maybe maybe we need to use this to get it apart, do you think? Still not sure what to use it for, but we'll figure something. It's a nice LED there. Gosh, there's not much to it, is there? I think I bought these when they were on sale for a two pack. I don't know, it was like 25 or 30 bucks. I think they're twice that price if you just buy them one at a time. Gosh, yeah, there's nothing in there. There's a clip for the battery. There's the light. And the circuit board looks like the circuit board has the switch on it. So if we were just to extend the wires on this and only put the LED, oh, I guess the LED outside 
with this over it. Well, that wouldn't be too hard to carve a block that this fit into and this somehow attached to. Ooh, the question is, how hot do you suppose this would get at its hottest? And it looks like it's only the very edges that are of this that's mounted to the plastic. All the rest of it's not really touched. You know what? Let's do a little test. Let's see how hot we can get it. Oh yeah, duh. There's the extra one. I think there is actually a brighter LED in here. I mean, this part looks almost identical, but this burns through batteries a lot faster, these big ones. And it, it does put out a lot more light too. Like this thing lights up this whole place at night. Oh, it look, looks like a tube of LEDs. I don't think we need that one. There's the rain again. All right, that's about 15 minutes. Let's see what the outside is. 70, yeah, about 78 where the light is on the outside. 106 was the highest I saw. Well, 106 isn't that hot. I mean, it's not going to catch a piece of wood on fire, that's for sure. And the actual light is like 125 at hottest. So let's just unhook this light. So all we need is this and this for the outside with a cool wooden mount, probably. And then somehow this thing goes inside, mounted like this to the wall. It's ugly, but will it work? Oh, look at that. Let's try to make a little protector heat sink thing. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Almost don't need anything to hold it in. I don't know why I just clipped those wires and soldered an extension onto one inch wires. I could have just unsoldered it from the light itself. But it's done now and the solder looks good so we're gonna leave it. I think I got this liquid electrical tape at a dollar store once just because it was there. I don't think I've ever used this stuff but it seems like a good use to dab some on here on my bare wires. It smells like uh it's like black rubber cement. That is some good marketing right there. Whoever thought of 
putting black dye and rubber cement and then putting a different label on it, calling it liquid electrical tape is, that's what we're all kind of looking for in life, right? Some easy million dollar idea. I like those little heat powered fans. That thing's sweet. It's actually kind of a weird thing if you think of the physics of it. Like if you have an engine, you're trying to use the chemical energy and the gasoline to make motion, but it's inefficient because you have friction in the system. So that's energy that can't be used to actually drive the engine, drive the car, or whatever. In this case, you're burning fuel to heat up the room, and when you use a fan like that, you're actually using some of the heat and turning it into mechanical energy. So I think, I'm not sure, but I think in my brain that by using that fan, you're actually putting less heat into the room. Does that blow your brain? It probably doesn't because you probably know exactly why I'm wrong, but it seems to me it would work that way. All right, let's go work on the other half of the light, shall we? mount this to the wall the only way I see to attach it are these little tiny screws that held the lens on there so I'm thinking maybe we just make a flange that goes around here sticks out a little bit and then flanges out the other way so you could screw into the wall unfortunately they got tricky on this and this is actually radiused and this is radiused and this is radiused all different so I'm gonna start with a square or a rectangular one see how it fits if it doesn't fit right then we'll go back in the CAD program and bend it around. So the widest spot is 46, widest spot this way 107. Sorry for the glare I haven't figured out how to make window shades yet. So we got 46 and I made it 108. Make the wall thickness three millimeters and I'll make these stick out the sides here I don't know, enough to get a screw in there, let's say 25. Three millimeters thick. And we'll make this stick out 25, we said. That looks like it might work. Went ahead and uh, drilled a few holes in there. Hopefully they match up, at least these two going into the light. It's a quick and easy way to make them all equidistant. Sheesh, that sucker is dusty. Been a while since I cleaned under there. Okay, looks like my uh, 3D printer might finally be dead. It's continuing to heat pieces that aren't supposed to be uh, heated that hot. Well, that's a bummer. Seven print starts to get it to work. No, this is the eight. Eight. This thing is such a pile. I've been wanting to get something new and decent for such a long time. This is a ripoff, a Chinese ripoff of a really good printer. And it's only apparently five years old, but it hasn't worked right since I got it. And just barely works once in a while these days. Had to change the print three times too, just to get it to work. But in a mere three and a half hours, running on really low speed it should be done and then we can see what didn't work and change it and do it all over again yeah i've already used 20 percent of my jackery too and don't have anything to show for it okay i'll stop whining you want me to go shower i'll go shower
Oh, that came out nicely, surprisingly. Now the question is, does this fit in here and do those little holes line up? I think it's gonna fit. It does fit, look at that. Let's see, so the light's gonna be up there by the door. Eh, uh, I was thinking we put it here, but maybe, yeah, we put it down here. Battery plugs in, and the switch is right on top of it. That'd be pretty good. I'm glad I put this all together with screws instead of nails. I mean, you see the screw heads, but the screw heads all over in the wall boards. You never know when you might want to take your cabin apart, not have to do any repairs or nail pulling. No, 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 no shooting until the project's done. I really want to go out and work on my speed shooting. My excuse was that this is, I mean, it's set up. It's just got a little bit of tack to it and it's been over the heater like all night. I did put two coats on it, but I don't know, does varnish go bad? Even stirring it, pulling the stick out, it just looks not like that clear honey, it's like a little cloudy or something. I don't know, the can's almost full. Well, we'll screw it to the side of the building and it'll dry out eventually. Here's our heat sink backer. That's unnecessary. And then I got some of this left over. I bought it when I had to take apart my computer. This is like thermal paste like for the back of a CPU or a GPU or something. You know, the part in your computer that processes graphics or whatever, it gets quite hot and usually it's it's got some way to get rid of the heat. But it's to take that computer part, press it to the heat sink or the radiator and actually make contact. So I should take the heat from this and put it into this rather than just setting it on there. It's not something I would normally worry about except that this is set in really light wood, dry wood against a wooden house. It's like the most flammable place you can imagine. And I'd hate to have my homemade light burn my friggin' house down. It's lovely. Nice tight fit. I think I'd still like to use something to hold this down just so it never pops out of there. I don't think I have any tiny nails. I could actually put a staple in there and bend it or thumbtack. I think I know where to find a thumbtack. Oh, I kind of want two. This is the tack that comes inside the roll of flypaper. Oh yeah. And you pull the little thing out, the fly ribbon flypaper unrolls and they give you that to stick it to something. There we go, perfect. Guess that way, eh? Anybody got a measuring stick on them? It was like when you can put the right connector back onto your project like this, the connector that came with the whole thing. before we put it together we should see if it still works right
I get the wires backwards or did I break a solder? Do me a favor and just ignore the fact that I cut these wires right in the middle and I'm going red to white and white to red. It's not like I could possibly have made the mistake of uh, soldering these wrong. I tested it and there is power going through it so I just soldered the wrong wire to the wrong color. Let's try this again. We've got light. You gotta hook the right one up to the right one. That's just a mind bender. I know I've wired up LEDs either way and they worked fine. These are Ryobi LEDs. These are high quality. They're real picky. You know, I always have to be listening to something and I just, uh, I listen to Guns, Germs, and Steel about once every year, one to two years. I just saw it in the library app and had to listen to it again. It's so engrossing that, of course, I'm paying no attention to what I'm doing at all. left to do is put a little sealant on the edges of this. Oh my gosh, it's too cold. <laughs> Can't even squeeze it out of there. Oh geez. Might have to go put it over the heater for a little bit. Wow, gotta have an electric gun when the temperature's like this. Actually, I think I caulked the whole man cave in the winter, didn't I? Or when it was pretty cold. I remember having to put all the tubes by the heater for a couple hours. This thing barely pushes it out. It's not that it's a weak gun, but if they ramp it up anymore, you'll just blow out the back of it. Cold enough it doesn't even really want to stick. It'll do though. If I don't do it now, I'll totally forget about it. Got some videos processing. I'm making my salad. And for the first time at this time of the year, I'm just waiting for it to get dark. Hurry up and get dark. Got to drink a lot of water and, and wait for it to get dark so I can use my light. Gotta have jalapenos. I've been eating this dinner for about three years straight, almost every single night. And I know it's not that good for you to eat the same thing over and over and over, but I love it. Lettuce, broccoli chopped up real small, chopped up jalapenos, some shredded Parmesan, and here's the key. I never ever ate Caesar salad in my entire life. I never liked it, and for I don't know why I tried this one, but this uh, Brianna's, Bri Brianna's, Homestyle Asiago Caesar dressing is, it is dope. And of course it's Michigan and it's this time of year so you can get some freaking amazing apples around here. So I've been eating honey, whoops, I already put the dressing on. Okay there. Yeah, I eat two big honey crisp apples every single night with peanut butter. Oh yeah, croutons, gotta have croutons too or it's just a disaster. Does peanut butter come in anything smaller than a four pound uh, bottle? I don't think so. Those apples are just unbelievable. I hope you've all had a honey crisp that's this good. Of course, if you ate one of these, only one of these, it would ruin every other apple for the rest of your life. I am actually pissed off at dinner for about 10 months out of the year because you compare everything else to these. Mm. All right, I can't wait anymore. I'm not done eating, but let's give this a go. 
Holy cow. That kicks out a ton of light. I was gonna wait another uh, 20, 30 minutes till it's completely dark out here, but you know, GoPros don't do the dark. Wow, that thing, you can see the light on the man cave and on my tent. That's like a couple hundred feet. Yeah, that's fantastic. I also like that you can turn it down. You do really low if that's about all I'd usually use. You know, just coming inside the door and reaching over there, it's right where a light switch is. I'm gonna make another one. My thought was to somehow use one of these, I think I said this before, for some kind of weird chandelier. I also have some other little, I don't know how many volts they are, 12, oh, they're 12 volt LEDs, little tiny strips. So maybe you'll think up something really bizarre for a chandelier have this LED as the main part of it, and then I could do LEDs off the side. I mean, the obvious thing would be like deer antlers or something, but I think we're gonna have to get more creative than that. But that'd be really cool to have two of them right here. Like I said though, it's a little bit dumb because the batteries are so expensive. However, you know, sometimes you buy a tool and they've got these little two amp hour batteries that come with it. I don't really ever use them for anything. So these are these would be great for lights. At least at least for the outdoor light, this will work great. And for the indoor chandelier, I have some old four amp out. Can you see anything? Just imagine what I look like. How beautiful it looks right here. Yeah, like this was the first four amp hour battery that Ryobi had. I think uh, when they went from lead lead acid to lithium, and they're slightly whipped. So these would be great for that. Cool. Well, thanks for watching. I'm uh, as I'm sitting here eating. I'm still milling over how to make this work for window shades. When it's only about half enough material. That makes some awesome shades, though, wouldn't it? We'll figure something out. So come on back next week, next Saturday morning, and uh, we'll either make some hairy window shades, or I'll show you how far I've gotten on uh, the kitchen project. Oh, man, that's going to be a big one, but, you know, we got nothing else to do. Cut trees and push the chainsaw mill, you know, the kind of stuff we usually do out here. All right, thanks. You want, want some apple? All right, I'll eat it. Okay, I'm going to eat it.